Good morning, Creekside Otters. Today is Monday, February 5th, 2024. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Let's start our day off with a morning check-in. How is everybody feeling? What zone are you in? Go ahead. What zone are you in? Yeah, well, yeah, let you know how I'm doing. I am feeling like I'm in the blue zone today. I'm not really sad. Just kind of, mm, I'm kind of moving a little slow. <sighs> I'm a little tired, probably. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. I was busy this weekend, and maybe that's part of it. And, uh, had a lot of things going on. But this morning, what I'm trying to do is try to eat a good breakfast this morning, you know, wake myself up, talk to people, get out of my comfort zone, not just kind of sitting around uh, and doing busy work, but just really trying to get out and, and, uh, take part of the school and see all of you. And that's going to help me get myself back into that green zone. Um, so if you see me around today, uh, let me know how you're feeling. Let me know how you're doing. I hope everybody's doing well and that we can continue to be in that green zone, ready to go and ready to work. Uh, all right. So last month we were focusing on perseverance and I had uh, one of our Creekside Otters uh, she noticed something outside of school, uh, and maybe it was in school. They were having a discussion and she shared it with her class uh, and with her teacher about something that she found out. And I'm going to let her speak, uh, to what she found out. So here she is. I heard that there's a robot named De Perseverance and there was two more before Perseverance. There was Opportunity and Spirit mm -hmm. and... I think why they named the a rover perseverance because they the two uh, the, the two first ones they died, but then they made a new one to keep going. What an amazing find, right? Like that is the stuff that we, I want you to be thinking about, right? Making making these character traits and these things that we've been talking about perseverance. Uh, <clears throat> thinking about those, applying them into your lives and doing those things that you know are right. Especially empathy. 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 <laughs> All right. So now this month, since we're into the month of February, this month we'll be talking about honesty. One way to think about honesty is being truthful in what you say and what you do. Let's think about that. Being truthful in what you say can mean that we tell the truth. What about being truthful in what we do? That that could mean following through with things that you say you will do, like keeping promises, or it could also mean simply being true to yourself. Our quote of the week is from Laura Ingalls Wilder, an influential children's author uh, in American history. And she said this, the real things haven't changed. It is still best to be honest and truthful, to make the most of what we have, to be happy with simple pleasures, and have courage when things go wrong. Why do you think being honest takes courage, especially when something might go wrong? Maybe while you're in the building, if you see me, if you have any good thoughts about that, about uh, being honest and why it might take some courage, let me know. Share with me or write me a little note. Put it in my mailbox. I would love to read that. Honesty falls under our be well category. Uh, that's also includes creativity and gratitude, two of which we've already done this year. Have we done creativity? I don't think we have. Maybe just gratitude. This week, we're going to do a little shout out to fourth grade as they are going to be working on this week around positive self-talk. Can't wait to hear how positive self-talk helps helps you out this much, helps you out this much, this month, fourth graders. All right. 
And I guess leaving you with a question of the day, how can you show honesty today at school? Think about that. How can you show honesty today at school? Uh, and let's see, the last thing is tomorrow, Tuesday, February 6th at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon, we will be having our monthly assembly, our honesty assembly, tomorrow, 1.30 in the afternoon. Yeah! Be there or be square, and I will see you around the building. And as always, make it a great day, Otters. Um, welcome to the mindful moment for this week. Today I have my friend Sara. He's from Miss Russell's class. We're going to be doing um, mindful breaks, roll and do. I can send these to your teachers, but it's going to use. Uh, you need a dice, and there are just some things that you can do to take a mindful moment. We're going to have Sara. He's going to roll the dice, and then we're going to do three different ones today, and just follow along. Okay, ready, Sara? Yep. Go ahead, roll the dice. He got a four, and four is, we're going to, oops, wrong way. We're going to visualize a happy place five times. So we're gonna take five breaths. We're gonna take five breaths, we're gonna close our eyes, take five deep, deep belly breaths, and think of a happy place. Breathe in, breathe out. Think of your happy place. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe all the way in. Breathe out. One more time. Breathe in. Breathe out. I'm thinking of Hawaii. Breathe in. And breathe out. Okay. That feels good. Let's go to the next one. Okay, sorry. I was going to roll it. Woo. Oh, where'd he go? Oops, sorry. Yeah. Looks like we've got a five. Okay. Five is shoulder stretch, five times. Here we go. Here we go. You're gonna reach over one, two, three, four, five, switch. One, two, three, four, five, switch. One, two, three, four, five, two more. One, two, three, four, five, and one more. One, two, three, Four, five, stretch up, and there you go. Okay, one more. Okay, so our, our last one. Oh, five. Five again. Okay, so five this time is our fingertip press five times. Okay, and you're going to press. And release. Push down. Okay, hopefully that works. I will send the, the PDF to your teacher so that you can have that in your quiet corners and hopefully that'll be good brain breaks and mindful moments for you. All right, bye otters, we'll see you later. Bye. Hey fourth and fifth graders. Pride Club applications are now being accepted until this Friday, February 9th. If you are interested in joining Ms. Motley and Ms. Walmsley to support a culture of kindness and inclusion here at Creekside, ask your teacher for an application. Our first meeting will be after midwinter break. Thank you to everyone who participated and brought in food for the food drive. It was a huge success. A special shout out to our student council members for organizing and collecting all of the food. Let's take a look at all of their hard work.
for something in the air, rhythm in the air tonight. Oh, so get on up and fix your hair. We bout to tear it up, alright. We have the Quicksay Autocast, a podcast of fourth and fifth graders talking all all things Quicksay. Today we are here with Mr. Mesa, our school custodian. Hi. So my first question is for you: Why did you want to become a custodian? Great question. That is a great question. Well, I'm not really sure. Um, I needed a job. Um, I had to find something that was full time and. I had a friend that worked for the school district and he said that he thought I would be great and he told me that an elementary school would be a good place for me and he was absolutely right. I love being here. How long have you been working as a custodian? Um, I am almost at three years as a custodian. That's a long time. Yes, yeah. it is. I've been at Creekside for almost two years. Next month will mark two years for me at Creekside. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> What set of skill, what skill set do people need to become a custodian? You have to have really good attention to detail. Um, you gotta like to clean. And in an elementary school, you have to like kids because there is a lot of you guys. <laughs> a ton, ton. That's so true. It is true. So for the middle question, should I say so, um, what, why did you want to work at a school? Because I enjoy kids. My my own children, I have twin boys that are almost 21 years old and uh, they are grown and live on their own and I enjoy kids. And so I figured what better way to get to still interact with kids than to do this. Wow. Do you, do you like being a custodian? I do. I really do enjoy my job. What's your favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job? Getting to joke with you guys in the hallways and getting to interact and high fives and hugs and all those kinds of things. It's a lot of fun to do. Oh, and by the way, what about the um, school donation drive? Is that something that you and students like to do? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Giving back to your community is super important. Mm -hmm. Why did you set up the Greek team? Um, well, I didn't set it up. I just continued it. Um, but I love doing it because I get to work with kids. I get to teach them all sorts of skills about cleaning and working and the importance of being a good good citizen of your building and, and taking care of things. Who is the person that worked here before you? Uh, Mr. Holbrook. Mr. Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And for the final question, who are you rooting in the Super Bowl? I am a huge football fan, so I'm I am excited. also a huge football fan, and I will be cheering for the Kansas City Chiefs. They oh. are, well, I can't help it. So here's why. I have an auntie that lives in Kansas City, Missouri, and I have actually been to that stadium and watched the Chiefs play when I was probably 16 or 17 years old. And so Kansas City's always had a little soft spot in my heart, so. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time for some Creekside Inside Scoops. Bye. 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 The month of February is designated as Black History Month. In the United States, it is a time to honor the important role African Americans play in the story of our country. The idea began as a week-long celebration in 1926, organized by historian Carter G. Woodson and others. It coincides with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass, a brilliant orator who escaped slavery and spent the rest of his life working to stop it, and President Abraham Lincoln who issued the Emancipation Proclamation during the Civil War, which led to the eventual end of slavery in the U.S. Others who fought to end slavery include famous women like Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman. Woodson's idea caught on, and soon schools and communities around the country began organizing celebrations, starting history clubs, and hosting events to learn more about black history and culture. 
The civil rights movement in the 1960s sparked even greater interest in the many accomplishments of notable African Americans, who excelled in all areas of life despite obstacles and hardships. Like scientist George Washington Carver, educator Mary McLeod Bethune, baseball great Jackie Robinson, entertainer Oprah Winfrey, and President Barack Obama. Black history is American history. Black History Month is a special time to focus on and learn more about black culture and people of African descent who have made American life richer. How is Black History Month celebrated in your school or community?